My name is Becky Cady. I'm the wife of Chief Justice Mark Cady. We met at a social gathering in 1976. He was starting his second year of law school. Well, his career decisions, I think, changed after he became an associate district judge. He truly loved being on the bench. He truly, truly loved serving the people of Iowa. And he decided that maybe that might be a career for him. I'm Michael Streit. I was a justice on the Iowa Supreme Court from 2001 through 2010. With Mark and I, we both came up through the ranks of uh, trial court judges in lawyers looking at the Iowa Supreme Court. You know, it's significant to many lawyers that some of the justices, at least some of them, have trial experience. He applied to be on the Supreme Court and his first try, he did not get it. Chief Justice Marsha Turnus got that position and he applied maybe a year later and was appointed by Governor Branstead to be on the Iowa Supreme Court. He was extremely honored, as was our whole family. We stayed in Fort Dodge the whole time. We raised our kids in Fort Dodge and he for years and years commuted. And I talked to him about it. You know, you're going to be on this court for the next 20 years. Do you really want to be commuting an hour and a half each way? He said, I, I owe it to the people that got me here. And it was the, my fellow citizens of Fort Dodge that are, are part of me. A lot of that is just that he was a person of the people, that people loved talking to him. He was like any other common guy. If you pointed out to people, well, he's the Chief Justice of Iowa, most people, oh, I, I knew he was a judge, but I didn't know he was that. <laughs> and he would come home at night, coach or watch a game and go back at night sometimes. He, um, he was a great father and he loved his job. The Varnum decision came out in April and I knew that the court had had the arguments. I did not know he was writing it. He was the best guy for this job of all seven justices. His ability to communicate complex legal matters for people on the street the, the non-lawyers was, uh, was astounding. But if you actually read the opinion that Mark Cady wrote, it just sings. It's a beautifully written opinion. It's so well balanced and so tempered, it acknowledges the arguments that are against uh, the decision and addresses them articulately. And he did a beautiful job. He didn't know if he got a good deal or a bad deal because literally when they had to meet together to decide who was writing the decision, they drew straws, and he drew the short straw. So he was very proud, very, very proud of his decision, but it definitely affected our life. It started a whole new life for us um, for many, many reasons. We were very, very proud, and I still am, of that decision. Um, it became very political. Um, we had threats as to the other six members of the court. We had, we lost our church, we lost a lot of friends over that decision, but we, were, we always remained proud of the decision, and, but it did definitely affect our life and Mark's. He did a lot of amazing things, however, whenever he's introduced, the first thing that is said is he wrote the Barnum decision. Not that I'm ashamed of that, but um, he did a lot of other things, too, that we're proud of. Well, I'm probably not the person to tell you all of his professional accomplishments because I was his wife, but he just truly was passionate about equality for all. He started implicit bias training many years ago with all the employees in the Iowa Judicial Department. He worked hard to make the courts of Iowa be well respected. In fact, his number one goal was to have the Iowa court system be the number one in the nation. He established this is what a chief justice does, and he's, he's our guide through our court system, how it affects people, how it works in the community. He was always trying to maintain a presence of the court in every county of our state, and he would bring that mission to the legislature. He, he always articul articulating fair and impartial courts, that, they, that the Iowa Supreme Courts makes decisions based upon the merits and the law, 
tempered with judicial knowledge and discretion. Uh, how, does, how does this affect the citizens of the state of Iowa if we decide it this way? Um, and that was always his guidepost. But always in the background is what's fair and impartial, not the most important, not the loudest, um, but what, what, is, what, is, what, what does the law say and how should it be applied? Since his death, I have realized so much more the impact he has had on people, not only in Iowa, but across the country. And um, I've heard from people that the things he has done in his career have impacted their lives much more than I ever dreamed. He lived and died, pretty much he did, for the courts. Everything he did was to make the courts respected. Well, number one, he was an amazing father amazing father and a great husband. He believed everyone should be treated the same. He believed that everyone had a say, everyone should be heard, and that our laws should protect everyone. He was a notable man. We're, we, we miss him already. Uh, I don't know how many times I've started to reach the phone to call him and, oh, no, <laughs> he's not here anymore. So um, he, he, he will be missed. He deserves the award, the Joy Corning Award for leadership. For him to receive this in her honor is just notable and such a nice mesh of personalities. He and her were uh, good friends and um, this, is, this is a well-deserved reward for his leadership um, as a government official, as a Supreme Court Justice and Chief Justice of our court. I continue and will always be so proud of him. His whole goal in life was to make the judiciary the very best he could. He truly, truly believed in justice for all, and he truly tried to work very hard for the people of Iowa. Always.